This creature resembles a lobster, but is quite different. What exactly is this creature? Today, we will dissect a crayfish. Ta-da! I've bought a frozen crayfish. Upon removing it from the plastic bag, here's the crayfish. The antennae are slightly damaged, but when you spread them out like this, the body is well preserved. It's quite large, isn't it? Interestingly, crayfish is not the precise name for this creature. It's a general term for freshwater species of the Astacidia order, which includes lobsters. The correct term for this creature is spiny lobster. Its hard cephalothorax shell is adorned with small spines pointing forward. The rostrum is also sharp and spiny, earning it the name spiny lobster. But actually, it's not exactly a lobster either. To understand its biological classification, most of our beloved crustaceans belong to the Decapita order, characterized by having ten legs. Decapods are split into two suborders, Dendrobranchiata, which release their eggs into the sea, and Pleosiomata, which carry their eggs on their abdomen. Lobsters and spiny lobsters both belong to the Pleosiomata. However, within the Pleosiomata, lobsters and spiny lobsters are categorized under different superfamilies, Astacidia and Acolata, respectively. Acolata includes species like the fan lobster and the slipper lobster, which resembles a cicada larva. Thus, the spiny lobster shares more similarities with these creatures than with true lobsters. A key difference from lobsters is the absence of claws. The spiny lobster's legs are all pointed, similar to those of the fan shrimp. The fan shrimp's antenna are flattened and uniquely shaped, whereas the spiny lobsters are long and rigid. The spiny lobster has small antennae at the center of its body, and large ones alongside them. These antennae function as sensory organs to detect vibrations and chemicals. Interestingly, the spiny lobster can make threatening sounds by snapping the joints at the base of these large antennae to ward off predators. Isn't that curious? If you look at the tip of the abdomen, you'll notice a tail fan like this. In danger, they can quickly escape by flexing and extending their abdomen, similar to a shrimp. The abdomen is segmented, allowing for easy bending and stretching. Next, if we lift up the spiny lobster and examine its ventral side, it looks a bit… unusual. Firstly, there are ten walking legs on the thorax. Above, similar to a crab's mouth, the spiny lobster has mandibles that manage the food around its mouth, and within these mandibles are choppers that dice the food. They use these mandibles and maxillae to feed on sea urchins, bivalves, and mollusks. The digested food is then expelled through the anus, located here at the end of the abdomen. Pew, pew, pew! Next, the legs on the abdomen are known as swimming legs and you can differentiate between males and females by observing these swimming legs. The swimming legs of males are simple in shape, while those of females are slightly larger and the tips of their legs are parted. Females have more developed swimming legs than males to hold and protect their eggs after spawning. Interesting, isn't it? Now, let's start dissecting the spiny lobster in earnest. The body of the spiny lobster is mainly divided into the cephalothorax and abdomen. The cephalothorax is protected by a hard shell, inside which are vital organs like the heart, gills, and gonads. When the shell is carefully cut open, it looks like this. This is the heart of the spiny lobster. The yellow substance covering it is the hepatopancreas. And if you cut away the side shell and look from the side, you can observe the gills. 
As the gills move, they facilitate efficient gas exchange. If you look closely here, you'll see the white part. It has been a while. This part is the ovary, the female's reproductive gland. Although it's white now, it will turn orange and swell as the eggs mature. And if you look around here, you'll see the stomach, the digestive organ of the spiny lobster. If you insert a pair of tweezers into the mouth, you can see it's connected to the stomach through the esophagus. After removing the stomach, we separate the cephalothorax and abdomen, revealing the digestive tract connecting to the abdomen as shown here. Next, we cut open the abdominal shell. As you can see, it is filled with meat. The part we eat is the abdominal muscle of the spiny lobster. I was surprised to find the muscles were denser than I expected. After opening the upper part of the abdominal muscle slightly and pulling the stomach, we can also see that the intestines are connected to the anus. Pulling like this removes it all at once. It's all removed, isn't it? I removed the tail fan and shell, leaving only the inside muscle, and baked it in the oven, with butter and garlic on top. This was my first time eating spiny lobster, and the meat was quite firm for a frozen lobster. Very tasty. That's all for this video. This was Fishy Science where science reveals the mysterious.